This is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Caveco Palm Green. I'll be doing a writing sample on Tomoe River paper, and I'll take a look at a writing sample that I did previously on copy paper. Then I'll compare Caveco Palm Green to similar inks from my collection. And finally, I'll take a look at my water resistance test. I need to insert a disclaimer at this point. Caveco Palm Green appears to be more teal in my video than it appears in person. Caveco Palm Green is actually what I would consider more of a true green, and in my viewfinder, it's looking a bit more like California teal. I'm seeing a bit more blue in it than it appears in, in real life. So if you're interested in this ink, I recommend checking out additional resources, maybe some ink comparison sites. But this video should give you a good idea about the performance of the ink. The first writing sample was done with a glass nib dip pen, and the ink came off the nib nice and uniformly, and it was pleasant to write with. The swatch was done with a pair of tweezers that were pinched together and dipped in the ink, and the swatch had a little trouble at first grabbing the Tomoe River paper, but then once it did grab it, it put down a nice crisp line. The ink came off the tweezers fairly uniformly on the Tomoe River paper with just a, a drip here at the end where the tweezers were lifted. But when I did the same type of swatch on my Subame ink collection card, the ink really grabbed the paper at the beginning of the swatch and put down a nice dark line and then faded to more of a, a medium. I do sense there is potential for shading. I'm going to begin with a Pilot 78G Plus with a stainless steel extra fine nib. This ink performs surprisingly well. I don't know why I'm surprised, but I'm surprised by how well it performs in this extra fine nib. I guess I've always heard that Caveco inks tend to be dry, and so I had just assumed that this was going to be a dry ink, but it's very pleasant, very legible in this extra fine nib. Very nice. Next I have a Pilot Custom 74 with a 14 karat fine nib. This is very smooth. Very pleasant to write with. down a nice amount of ink. Yeah, I forgot to put that this is smooth. And I like that this is like a true green, but it's not too bright. I, I like this shade of green. And since this is a Caveco ink, I've brought out my Caveco Skyline Sport that has an extra fine steel nib. Mmm, surprising. All right, a bit of a hard start there. I've done writing samples on several types of paper, and this is the first time I've had a hard start like that. This is a pretty smooth nib and smooth paper, but that's still a surprise. And I'm also getting the sense that it started out writing nice and wet, but it does feel like it's getting drier and drier. Um, I've noticed that with this nib whenever I'm journaling, and I've he heard other people express uh, that they've had the same issue. Uh, I'm just going to put... I'm disappointed because, oh, a little bit of a hard start there also. I'm going to put OK on that for now. Next, I've got a Twisby Mini 
with a steel fine nib. No problems with hard starting there. This is also a fairly smooth nib. This is a little bit drier. This Twisby Mini leans a little, I wouldn't call it a dry nib, but it leans toward the dry side. This is very pleasant. Next, I have my Caveco Perkeo All Black with a stainless steel medium nib. A slight bit of a hard start with the Perkeo also, just barely. And the Perkeo performs very similarly to the way it performs with most other inks. You get that slight amount of pencil-y feedback. It's more of a auditory feedback than a tactile feedback. I don't know if you saw there was a bit of a hard start there. This is very surprising. This is the first experience I've had with hard starts with this ink, and I've been doing several writing samples. Next, I've got a Pilot Pluminix with a stainless steel cursive medium nib. Very smooth. Very nice. Actually, one of the smoother nibs. Next, I've got a Caveco Lily Put with a stainless steel double broad nib. Very pleasant to write with. And finally, I've got a Jinhao X750 with a 1.5 stainless steel replacement nib. Another bit of a hard start. Okay, more hard starts, just me pausing to talk. And you can see it's a bit drier in this nib, and that may be the issue. While that dries, let's take a look at the writing sample on copy paper. My husband had to go back to work this week in the office after a year of working at home, over a year of working at home, and he had to take his printer with him, and so he also took his thin 20 pound copy paper and all I have left is my personal 24 pound copy paper so I've gone back to using this thicker copy paper but I think we can still get some good information from this. You can see the Private Reserve Avocado was a little wetter and did bleed through the thicker nibs, the wider nibs on this thicker copy paper but the only place it almost bled through with the palm green was the Caveco Double Broad. There were a couple spots. So Caveco Palm Green is not quite as wet as Private Reserve Avocado. Another thing I noticed was that palm green, you see a bit of shading, whereas on Avocado, it's flatter and the wetter nibs, the letters look a little more ragged. There's more feathering. Now, my favorite 
nib to use on this paper was the Caveco Sport. It just felt so nice. It, it felt like it was putting down just the right amount of ink. My Custom 74 and the Percao felt just a little too wet. The Custom 74, the letters just looked a little too blobby, like parts of the letters were too wet, and so it made the writing look a little more sloppy. The Percao looks okay, but it just felt like I was writing with a magic marker. It didn't feel like I was writing with a fountain pen. And the extra fine on the Pilot 78G was very nice. The legibility is great, and it felt nice to write with. Uh, the Twisby Mini was another one that leaned a little dry, but it was very pleasant. I enjoyed writing with it. Now, like I mentioned earlier, palm green is actually more of a true green. When I was writing with it, it kind of reminded me of Dimine Green Black because even though it is a brighter green, it's it's not too bright. I I could see myself using this to write with just for like journaling and, and stuff. It's, I guess... I could say it's easier on the eyes than an uh, actual bright green. Private Reserve Avocado is another ink that, just for everyday writing, I enjoy it also. It, it has a little more yellow to it, and Diamine Green Black has a little more black to it. Caveco Palm Green's kind of in the middle there. It's got a little more brightness to it without being too bright. Aurora Green and... Monteverde green are actual bright greens, and I do like them. They're very pretty, but for everyday writing, they just seem a little maybe too bright for me. J. Urban Lierre Sauvage is another bright green that has a little bit more yellow to it, but it's brighter than avocado, but it's a little bit lighter than the Aurora green and Monteverde Yosemite, I guess because it has that yellow in it. Now, in the water resistance test for Caveco Palm Green, with it being a brighter true green, I was expecting most of it to just wash away in the water. I was very surprised when this much gray stuck around after all the green washed away. And this kind of tells me something about the type of inks I like. I, when I wrote with that palm green for the first time, I just really liked it. I knew there was something about that ink that made it stand out from other what I call true greens or grassy greens. And I think it's because even though I, I couldn't put my finger on it, it had this little bit of gray to it. And I've noticed that a lot of the inks that I really prefer when I do the water resistance test have this gray left behind. Now some of the inks you can tell by looking at them that there's going to be a gray component, but this one I had no idea. Now a green ink that I am very fond of here lately is the Diamine Green Black, and you might think, oh well yeah it's got that gray component to it, but I just wanted to show you the water resistance test that I did for Green Black. This is a water resistance test that I did a while back of all my green inks that I had at the time and notice the variety of colors that are left behind from green inks. Let's see, here's diamine green black right here. No gray left behind, it looks like kind of maybe a brown or orange or something and very little of it left behind. And diamine green black, you would think there would be a lot of gray left behind and then this brighter palm green had so much gray left behind. You just never know what to expect with fountain pen inks. They are so unpredictable. Let's take a look at the Tomoe River writing sample. A bit of show through because it's a nice dark ink, but nothing even close to bleeding through. Most of the ink inks looked, actually, really all of them just looked very similar in tone. None of them looked like they were substantially wetter or drier than the others. Nothing really jumps out. 
I'm not really seeing any sheen. You can see down here if it's laid down very heavily. I don't know if you'll... Yeah. The sheen is... Looks almost like a black sheen. Shiny black. But almost everything except for the extra fine. Almost all of these you saw just... Or you will see just a little bit of shading. The shading is not really in your face. Maybe when you get to the broader nibs, well even those, the shading is not very abrupt. It's not real splotchy. Just subtle. Just enough to give your writing a little character. I was pleasantly surprised with this Caveco Palm Green, but let me just mention, the only writing sample that I had issues with hard starting was on the Tomoe River paper. I don't know if it's because it was substantially smoother than the other papers that I wrote on, but I'm not sure what was the cause of the skipping on this writing sample. But I can say I'm a fan of this Caveco Palm Green. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.